Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. There is hope. Let's talk about it today on book, chapter, and verse. Greetings, friends. Welcome to book, chapter, and verse. I'm Jeff Archie. We come to you with our studies weekly as we simply want to spend time together in a study of the Bible as we examine book, chapter, and verse. I know your time is precious, and for you to take the time with us, well, I hope that we can make it profitable, and it speaks highly of your interest in godly things. Now, throughout our study, you'll see contact information on the screen, and know that we would be delighted to hear from you. And please stay with us, for at the end of our broadcast, we like to offer absolutely free Bible study material. So in your own home, you can continue studying God's Word between our programs. For example, as you see on your screen, we have a variety of materials to send. As a matter of fact, I'll be glad to send you all of this as I can. We'll have a little bit more later. But for now, since this is book, chapter, and verse, let's turn to the book, chapter, and verse today of Acts 27, 22 through 25. In Acts chapter 27, beginning with verse 22, we read of a time in Paul's life. Here's what is said. Paul said, And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Now, within this, we read of the shipwreck of the Apostle Paul. Paul is under arrest, sailing toward Rome. And we see his tour that's laden with storms and winds. Oh, what challenges were before him. You know, as I began, I mentioned the song, the beautiful hymn, Count Your Many Blessings. Do you recall various phrases from that song? When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost. How about this one? Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? You know, since we're discussing songs at this point, I think of Luke chapter 8, 22 through 25, of Jesus stilling the storms and how that's reflected in the hymn, Master, the tempest is raging, the billows are tossing high. And I think of that writer, how the writer parallels a storm on the ocean with the storms of life. Do you know that feeling? Could it be that you, my friend, are going through a storm, if you will? Troubles in your life, kind friend? You know, we were all there at one time or another. So with our book, chapter, and verse of Acts 27, 22 through 25, I'd like for you and I today, specifically with the 27th chapter, to make some practical applications as we deal with the storms of life. Let's notice some things from the 27th chapter of the book of Acts. And let's think on these things. First of all, the world is a prison. Now, I know that sounds strange because the vast majority of us are sitting here as free individuals. And to those that have visited jails and prisons, we know there is no comparison. But for the child of God, this is a world that we do not long for. 
we realize in this world we are just passing through. Again, let me go back with another hymn. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. But you know, Paul referred to this as how the whole creation groans. Look at Romans 8, verses 18 through 24, how Paul describes this. He said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope, because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For when a man seeth, why doth he? He yet hope for. We are in a tough life. We groan, we suffer. Kind viewer, I dare say there are some things that you're dealing with now that's a storm that's tossing you to and fro. Let's take them on. As, see, as we see Paul a prisoner here in Acts 27, there are some interesting parallels. For example, verses 1 through 3. We are in the world's prison of sickness and health, hurting and pain, losing loved ones, losing a job. These are matters of reality. And they can toss and turn us at a moment's notice. Now, although the world has its challenges, there are times of refreshment with friends and loved ones. In verse 3, Paul said, The next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. So while Paul was a prisoner, he had some liberty to refresh, to help him, to help him to keep on keeping on. I think about Proverbs 18, 24, how a friend loveth at all times and a brother is born for adversity. I think also of Proverbs 17, 17 that speaks of friendship and the blessing that we have in Christ, those spiritual blessings in Ephesians 1 through 3. So when I take a look at Paul, I see that we are able to make it through this world, through Christ, when the storms of life come. Don't bear it by yourself. The Christ that can still the seas. The Christ that told Paul, I'm going to be there with you. God told him he would stand there. We're able to make it through this world through Christ. When the storms of life come, count the blessing of through Christ. Second thing to notice. The storms of life vary, and they are possibly treacherous. My, does threatening weather trouble you? Storms? Tornadoes? I remember as a boy, if I saw a tornado warning on TV or a tornado watch, it just frightened me immensely. A lot of people are not happy with storms. Now, consider Paul's travel again back to Acts 27. Verse 4 tells us how the winds were contrary. Drop down to verse 8 how that there were difficult winds that was not permitting them to proceed. 
In verse 9, the sailing is now dangerous. To where in verse 10, Paul admonished them and said, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the lading and ship, but also of our lives. The way things look, it's going to be tough. Indeed, verse 14, a tempestuous wind or a typhoon type wind came forth. And in verse 18, exceedingly tossed with a tempest. With what all they went through, note this, they made it. Now let's apply this in a practical way. Kind friends, storms vary. Storms of life vary. But don't miss this. Don't trust in the earthly matters. Trust in the spiritual master. Don't keep our eyes on the storms of our lives, but on the master who will help us through these storms. Although we are sailing, if you will, or moving onward with life, as we are uncertain of the weather ahead, we are certain of the one with whom we are traveling and the provisions wherein we travel. Storms are going to come. Things are going to arise. There's no doubt about that. But let's remember who is traveling with us. Let us remember the one that will help us through those moments. Let us pattern Hebrews 12 and verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let us look unto Jesus. Pattern Jude 21, look for His mercy. And according to 1 John 1 and verse 3, embrace His fellowship. Oh, how He will help me through life's storms when the storms of life come. He's right there. He will not go anywhere. Let's consider verse 18. Verse 18 says that they lightened the ship. Don't forget in our storms of life, we can lighten the ship. We see what is most important when we are on those billows of life, and sometimes it takes a little reorganization of responsibilities and commitments. Sometimes it takes us being stormed and moved and challenged to sit down and reorganize and say, maybe these things are not that important. Sometimes we get so busy with many matters and things that our ships, our lives cannot travel well. We have so much that are, that's going on, it slows us down. Quickly think about these things. How about 1 Peter 5 and verse 7? Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. We need to lighten our loads, lighten the ship, cast our cares upon Him. When we cast our cares upon Him, He has them. How about Matthew eleven twenty eight? 28? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, a storm of life. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Take a yoke upon me, Lord. Add more to what I have. Watch now. We cast our care upon Him, and when we take His yoke upon us, it's light, it's easy. But when we take His yoke upon us, then He is able to lighten our loads. Now watch, we're casting our care. He's lighting our loads. I mentioned Hebrews 12, 2 a while ago. How about Hebrews 12, 1? 
Wherefore, seeing we are compassed or circled about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Cast your care. Take his yoke. Lay aside. You know, a light and load helps me travel a little smoother. I can recall when I, shall I say, attempted to play baseball or softball. Remember those heavy, round things called the donuts? Now you see today in Major League Baseball, Minor League Baseball too, they'll drop the donut on the bat and they'll pick up an additional bat and they'll begin to swing and stretch and all and then they pop the donut off and take the bat up to hit. That bat becomes lighter. It's easier to maneuver. It's able, when they cast the weight off, the light and load helps it to work. My friends, maybe this is a time in our storm in our lives that maybe we need to start casting off, taking the yoke, laying things aside. I speak from experience. There are times that I feel weighed and a lot going on, and I sit down and I start looking at those things. And I find if I can cast some things aside, things that have weighed me down, it works better. Notice the fourth thing with me as we consider counting our blessings in the storms of life. Hold to the fundamentals. Back to verse 23 and 25. Whose I am, whom I serve, and I believe God. Oh, is that not good? Let's pause and remember whose I am. I am God's. I am Christ. I am theirs. Whom I serve. Remember, who am I laboring for? Who am I serving? And then to see as we continue on, I believe God. I'm going to hold to the fundamentals. I'm going to go back and work on those things that help me develop where I am today. Properly stated during all the storms that Paul faced, he remembered whose I am, whom I serve, and I believe God. Man, that's a blessing that I can count. Remember 1 Corinthians 7, 23, we're bought with a price. Don't be the servants of men. And you know, folks, maybe we're looking for a better harbor. You know, I think about Demas in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 10. Paul said, Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. He was looking for a, as he thought, a better harbor. Let us never turn our back on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us never do that. You know, it could be we may be looking for a better harbor, and I put that in quotes, if you will. And if so, we must realize that we're going to be losing a lot. We've talked about the storms that Paul went through in Acts 27 and the things that he faced. But my friends, we go and we face those storms of life every day. Your storm may be a level that's not as heavy as someone else. And then again, you can feel like it is raining down on you. Think on these things carefully and know that God is there and will deliver. Notice in this chapter something of interest in verse 31. Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship. You cannot be saved. You know, in Noah's day, except ye abide in the ark, you cannot be saved. 
Genesis 6, 8 and 9. Those that were not abiding in the ark when the earth erupted with the waters flowing and the storms coming, when that erupted, if you were not in the ark, you were lost. You were killed. Except you abide in the ship, unless they were in the ark. And today, kind friends, unless you abide in the body of Christ, the church, you cannot be saved. Jesus is the Savior of the body, Ephesians 5, 23. And as He is the head of that body, which is the church, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. And my friends, I believe I would be in where it is safe. You know, we talk about count your many blessings, name them one by one. Where are these spiritual blessings located? In the heavenly places in Christ. So kind friend, with all that you're facing today, are you in Christ? Are you allowing your problems to direct you or are you directing your problems toward God? Or here's the way that I like to hear it said. Maybe we need to quit telling God how big our problems are. Maybe it's time we turn to our problems and tell them how big our God is. And don't get me wrong, we need to cast our cares and our problems upon God but sometimes it's like we want to hold on to those things that are hindering us. And if we tell our problems, my God is big and I'm going to take you on and I'm going to lighten the ship. I'm going to realize how strong the storms are, but I'm going to have my Savior there to guide and to help me. I'm going to be refreshed by brethren. I'm going to allow these things to help me. My friends, would that be greater than just dealing with them daily? Remember, if we're in the ship, when the storms of life come, let's make certain we're in the ship. To get into Christ, Romans 6, 4 through 6, and Galatians 3, 27 tells one how you get into Christ. You get into Christ when you're baptized into Christ. You know, it's interesting. You can't believe your way into Christ. You can't repent your way into Christ. You can't grieve your way into Christ. You can't confess yourself into Christ. All of these are things that aim us to being in Christ. But when a person is baptized into Christ, based upon his faith in God, his faith in Christ, willing to repent of his sins, to turn away and to turn toward God, to change that decision resulting in a change of direction, and to confess Him to make that powerful, rock-solid statement, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And when that person is baptized into Christ, they are placed in Christ, where there are spiritual blessings in Christ, where we walk as new creations. And yes, the storms of life will come, but the Christ is there to help us through them. And look, it may take a while to get through those storms. Some storms, can, some storms, rather, can last for days, months, or years. But God helps us to maneuver our ships, our lives, helps to steer us, helps to guide us. And then we find, we reach for the words of Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, around verse 10, when I am weak, then am I strong. Dear friend, I know that you may be struggling today. I know you may have a storm you're dealing with, but do not give up hope. Stay faithful to Christ or obey the gospel of Christ this day. Give your life to God and let Him help you through these storms that are pulling you down. And Satan will tell you, oh, there's no need to try. You can't do this or do that. But turn closer to Christ. Casting those cares taking that yoke, laying aside the sin, leaning more on the Savior. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord hath done.
Glad you've joined me today, and I hope we've helped in some way. So let's embrace this hymn together, and I'll be back in a moment with some further thoughts. You know, the storms of life may alter our course, but let's keep our rudder straight and let's keep pressing onward as our Lord Jesus Christ will help us and guide us all the way. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Wonderful words of life.